I'm now going to introduce David Levy, who's the MD of Chemex Materials. Thank you for the introduction, um, and uh, thank you for coming along to, to hear the presentation on Chemex Materials. Uh, just a disclaimer. Um, what a time to be in critical materials. Um, Chemex is, is focused on the development of materials for the uh, energy transition and for the decarbonisation markets that are very rapidly developing. Um, our current projects are focused on a unique technology to produce high purity alumina um, that is, uh, has a, a much smaller carbon footprint than other technologies. And we've got two tenements on the Air Peninsula which are focused on um, manganese and the focus for that manganese project is on a high purity manganese sulfate material for the battery chemicals um, and kaolin and uh, helocyte. Uh, just a quick corporate snapshot, we listed on the ASX on the 18th of January. Um, since then the share price has uh, held up very well. Uh, the IPO itself was very well supported, uh, we raised $8 million and the shareholders um, for, a, for an IPO uh, we had quite a strong um, institutional and strategic um, backing. So we've got uh, a number of funds from the US, uh, Singapore and Europe um, who are all battery materials focused uh, on the register um, and our street strategic um, investors include um, uh, Neo Metals and Archer Materials, um, who we bought the, the tenements from. Uh, just a, the board and the management um, is a, a, a very well um, uh, credentialed board uh, with a wide experience across both the uh, mining, um, finance, and the battery material space. Um, so um, I've been involved with high purity alumina for the best part of 10 years. Um, and Dr. Nick Wellam, who was the developer of the HPA technology, um, has been involved with HPA for about five years. Um, so we've had a, a wide experience on the different technologies and also on the marketing side um, and the outlook for high purity alumina. Uh, sustainability, um, we've just heard the last couple of speakers talk about it. Um, it's not a, a nice to have. Um, sustainability and ESG is really the, what the, the market uh, demands um, and from a good corporate governance and a, and a project development perspective is what we should all be aiming for. Um, we're in the enviable, enviable position of um, uh, starting our, our project development journey and so we can put our sustainability framework around how we develop our projects and um, uh, reduce our footprint from day one rather than having to, to retrofit um, a framework around an existing project. Uh, since IPO uh, we've been extremely busy. Um, the key uh, points We've had Primero who have kicked off the pre-feasibility study on the pilot plant for the high, um, the high pure HPA process. The, the pilot plant is ex expected to produce about a, a tonne a day, so two to 300 tonnes per annum. Uh, the, uh, we're almost completed construction of a micro plant. Um, so the HPA technology has been developed over the last four years. Um, it works at a lab scale, um, we know that. What we're really trying to do is, is set up a, a small-scale commercial, uh, sorry, small-scale continuously operating plant, so we know the flow sheet will achieve what we expect it to achieve. So we're expecting delivery of that micro plant in the next couple of weeks, commissioned over April May, um, and then we get into the the optimization process, which we can then feed into uh, the uh, pre-feasibility study which we're expecting to have finished by the end of, uh, end of this quarter. Uh, we've undertaken a, our maiden drill program on the tenements in, um, on the Air Peninsula. Uh, we secured a, a, a driller um, the day after we listed on the ASX um, and that 
program uh, was completed in, in March. An important uh, curveball that's been thrown at us, and, and certainly in a, in a positive way, um, the tenements around us, which are owned by iTech Minerals, um, have uh, they've had a discovery of ionic rare earths um, to the to the west, to the east of our tenements, and also to the south. Now, none of the previous exploration on our tenement uh, looked for rare earths, and so from the uh, the current draw, the program that we've just finished. Uh, we'll be assaying for rare earths, and if we can get uh, similar results to, to ITEC um, on the rare earth front, uh, we'll have to rethink the development program for the, uh, <laughs> for the project. Um, just taking a step back, one of our key focuses is the energy transition. Um, the energy transition process is a, a subset of, of uh, the decarbonisation that uh, everyone is looking at, at trying to, uh, to do. Um, batteries take up a big part of that, but they're also not the only part of it. And one of the things that we recognise is that the technology developments within uh, each one of those um, parts of the, of the uh, energy transition process has an impact on, on the rest. Uh, more you know, in, in some greater or lesser form. And so it's important that we actually understand what's going on in other parts of the value chain um, and what impact that's going to have on the, on the battery space. Um, high purity alumina, um, it's really, um, if, if you want to talk about manganese being the unsung hero of, of, the, of the battery chemistry, HPA is the next level down. Um, it's really, the market for the battery separators has really kicked off in the last seven or eight years. Um, high purity alumina is coated on the separator between the anode and the cathode to provide a high level of, a higher level of uh, thermal stability uh, to, the, to the battery. Um, it's also, um, research is, is going on in using, the, uh, using HPA to coat the anode and the cathode to, to improve the stability of the chemistry. Um, and again, the, one of the aims there is to reduce the amount of cobalt in the chemistry um, because there are concerns around supply and around, uh, around ESG. The other real uh, growth area for high purity alumina is in synthetic sapphire. Um, it's used in LEDs, semiconductors, optic, optical equipment. Um, for those of you that have got an iPhone, the camera lens on your iPhone is sapphire, so a lot of it are walking around. A lot of us are walking around with it in our pocket without actually realising it. Uh, the battery materials to date, um, the, as I've mentioned, the, the key um, aspect of that is really the pre-feasibility that Primero are undertaking for us, and that kicked off in, um, in February. The other, you know, the, the photo there, you can see our, um, our chair, Christy Young, um, and Nick Wellam, who's the, the metallurgist up at ALS Labs with some of the samples from our, our test work. Um, one of the key things that we uh, take very seriously is that we're part of the value chain. So it's important that we know what's uh, above the value chain, what's below us, um, and what technologies they're working on and what changes might happen so that we can get ready for the, the developments that are coming. Um, and so we've, uh, we're a key participant in the future battery CRC, uh, which is sort of the, the pinnacle, I think, for, uh, for the development of the battery industry in Australia. Um, the European Battery Alliance, the Global Battery Alliance, they're all forums that will allow us to have that, to develop those networks to know what's coming. The high pure HPA process, why is it different to, to others that you may have seen? Um, there's a couple of key differences. Um, it's scalable, um, so we can start off small and grow with demand, so we're not having a, a large production facility that is sitting there idle for part of the time and with material that we can't sell. Um, we believe it, it'll be lower cost from a capex and an opex point of view. Um, one of the key things, it's independent of mine production, so we don't use any mine input. So from a, a time to market perspective, we don't have to go through the approval process and the development process for a, for a mine. And from an operations point of view, we're not taking the, the mining risk either. Um, and it's modular, so we can have production facilities close to the end markets. That allows us to reduce the, the carbon footprint of the log logistics chain. It also uh, reduces the supply risk, as you know, we've all seen over the last 12 or 18 months, the issues with logistics chains around the world when they break down, 
things stop. If you've got a production facility you know, just down the road, um, it makes it much easier. The Air Peninsula projects, um, they're on the eastern side of the Air Peninsula, about 115 kilometres west of, of Wyala. So um, infrastructure is excellent. Uh, the Air Highway runs just to the north of us. Um, there's reticulated water. There's a number of wind and, and solar farms um, within the area. Um, there's also a, a hydrogen hub that's been planned just north of, of Wyala. Um, so from a, a project development perspective, it's um, uh, in an ideal location. Uh, just some pictures of the, uh, the drilling on the Air Peninsula. Um, again, we started work on this very quickly after, after listing, um, got it done and we've got the, the assays, uh, the, sorry, the, the samples into the lab for assays. Um, unfortunately, the, uh, the issue with turnaround times at labs is, is similar in South Australia as, as it is here in, in WA. Um, the Jamison Tank Manganese Project, um, as I mentioned, the focus of this is really on developing a uh, high, high purity manganese sulphate product for, for batteries. Um, we don't have the, uh, the scale to consider a, a, a direct shipping um, product. It's really um, uh, focused on that value add um, and the, the high purity uh, nature of the, of the, the deposit. Um, and also the mineralogy makes it relatively easy to process. Um, we just went through the, the role of manganese in uh, lithium batteries, so I won't bore you with going through that again, but um, it is very much a case of uh, you know, a number of key players, uh, Volkswagen and, and Tesla, uh, looking to, to increase the, the percentage of, of manganese in the battery. Uh, so the, the key uh, key takeaways from this Chemex Materials is really a, a it's a materials technology business. Um, we believe the the projects we've got at the moment, the, the high purity alumina is very very advanced, um, and we'll be pushing hard to get the the pilot plant built early next year. Uh, and then once we uh, commission that alumina, we need to we move straight into uh, a, a commercial scale production. The Micro plant that we're starting allows us to produce uh, samples to, to uh, start the qualification process with buyers. The development of the pilot plant early next year uh, will allow us to give us the bigger volumes that the final stages of qualification needs. Um, and with the Air Peninsula, those projects are being developed. The test work for the manganese sulfate product, uh, the initial test work is a, a couple of weeks away from being finalised, but is looking very positive. Uh, and we'll move straight into um, optimising that process with samples from the, the current or from the recent drill program. Um, the, uh, as I said at the start, the critical minerals, you know, is a very exciting place to be. The uh, technology developments that are happening, the changes in supply chains are all opening up opportunities. Our strategy is to really take advantage of those opportunities on top of the projects that we've already got. Um, so I think between having uh, ex rapidly growing markets, um, technological, technological change and having the team to be able to take advantage of those changes um, really paves the way for a very bright future for, for Chemex. Thank you for your time.